Hi, in this video I want to cover some techniques that you can employ when you're working with ZBrush and you're trying to develop hard surface models. Uh, so we're starting in Max in this case. I'm going to create a box and I'm going to convert it to an editable poly. A kind of typical thing you would want to do is you'd want to have a shape and you just want it to have like nice fillets around it so that it'll or chamfers so that it'll bake well. So what you might end up with is something like this. So if I just, obviously I'm going to work on something simple, but you can imagine this being more a more complicated thing. Uh, if I make this quite big, and then it's going to be a high poly, so I'm going to give it you know quite a few of these uh, to get something that's round. And you've got this, but like this topology is a bit of a nightmare. Um, if you were doing this sort of heart with sub D modeling in mind it could be potentially problematic if you want to kind of get a general chamfer around the whole thing then the thing to do would be to export this and let's call it testo one that's fine and i'm going to export it out as triangles to zbrush and then we'll go across to zbrush okay so we're in zbrush uh, i'm just going to import there one. Pull it out, hit edit, and we've got a shape in here. So if we want to make this so that it has like a general, you know, like we, we're basically chamfering it, then we've got a few options in here. And if we go down to, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a bit more geometry. If we try to do it through divide, it's going to do this, which is not cool. I'm going to use DynaMesh. So I'm just going to set DynaMesh up, give it a resolution of about 500-ish. Let it DynaMesh this as it is. There you go. So we've got a nice DynaMesh. Uh, we've got a model which is nearly 700,000 polys, uh, which should probably be enough. And we've got some a little bit of step in, but not too much. And then so if we take this, uh, let's look at it in perspective. I'm using a mouse here, so I'm kind of floundering a little bit okay so if we go into the deformation tab at the top of the deformation tab there are a bunch of polish options so if we just hit the top one just to see what it does so I'm using it with the big circle I hit 100% polish the big circle it does this pillow in edge detail which actually works which is kind of a tighter crease and it works quite well with when you bake it and um, but if you want something that's more general i'll just undo that so that's control z and if i click on this button and then polish with this again this is a more aggressive polish and you can see that it actually just starts to soften it all and it'll soften it on every corner and it'll get you a you know a nice soft edge pretty much straight away and you can just keep polishing it to get something which is softer and then when you're happy there you go that's great so the problem you've got now is you've got a you've got a mesh that's 660,000 polys so that's not that useful you can't really use that in max uh, so if we just go to Z plugin and go down to decimation master if we pre-process current this will go through the process of basically analyzing the mesh um, and then once we've gone through this process, we're able to we'll be able to decimate it. So that basically make it smaller with it with it still looking visually the same. It's done that. Let's go to uh, let's decide what we're going to do. So let's get it down to let's try sort of around nine percent, nine to ten percent. Decimate current, and it does it really quickly. If we look at the uh, the wireframe what you can see it's done is it's kept a lot of this detail in here and run the edge detail and then it's stripped it out of all the flat planes obviously this mesh is useless to use in game or anything because it's horrid um, but it looks pretty legit so uh, visually so let's export that out and we'll call this test one high uh, or decimated des save okay and then we'll go back to max file import let's grab it we want to uh, import as editable poly 
Import. And there you go. He's back in. So if we just move him out of the way, see what he looks like. There we go. We've got a soft version of it. So obviously this is, you know, there's not a lot we can do with this mesh other than look at it. Um, but it gives you a pretty legit result. Obviously, you could use chamfers and all sorts of stuff in here. This is quite a simple object, but if you had more complicated objects and you wanted to get that effect over the whole thing, then uh, this would be quite useful. The So if I just stick a quick kind of shellac style material on this. So let's get this a bit darker. Get its spec level up. Let's us down a bit. There we go, just getting a nice sheen on it so we can kind of see it, its detail. And then I'll just change this to something more obvious. You can see that that looks pretty decent and it's not, Max isn't struggling with it. So in terms of something that a simple shape that you would want to bake, that's quite a quick process.